let's get to our last guest who is going to blow you away because I'm, it's a good reminder for me because sometimes I think the stupid people have won and our next guest reminds me that yes, there are not just intelligent life form out there, but they're just people out there just doing business and making their mark in the world at such a young age that is so inspiring, especially for an old head like me that often has no patience on any given day. Um, anyway, uh, she is a genius in many regards, so this is appropriate that she's here for Genius Talks. She's got a new production company, which is appropriately titled Genius. Uh, she has a bunch of upcoming film projects. You, of course, know her as Diane on Blackish. Please welcome Marseille Martin. you how to walk a nose. Oh, you know what? Funny story. Uh, it's, it'll be quick though, because I just got here. No, it's but, okay. <laughs> but actually, I, for a long time, I couldn't wear heels. Like, my parents would be like, no, you can't wear heels. And, you know, for a long time, I was like, eh, okay. Then the more I was practicing, because my grandma, uh, me and my grandma were the same size. So I would just practice in her heels all, all the time. And then when I finally had the opportunity to wear heels, I was like, bam, gotta, gotta work it out. So, you know, I learned how to kind of sort of young age, I'm like dressing up and doing fashion and stuff, because like that's my. Well, I learned at an old age, like maybe two years ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the many ways in which you are ahead of the curve. Uh, as I mentioned when I intro you, you have a new uh, production company, Genius, and yeah. I've seen the uh, photos of you at the offices, looking like a boss already, because uh, you are a boss. Um, what does it feel like to have your own company? You know, it's pretty cool, it's pretty surreal. It's, I don't even look at it as like an office or any of that, like a professional space. I look at it more as like a place where I can just be myself and be creative and that's the place that I want to be and create myself. And really, it's like a place where I can brainstorm, have a great time with my team and just have fun and, you know, be professional while we do it. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't even see myself as the boss because, you know, I still got parents with me, you know, like they're president and vice president. So, I mean, we all work as a family. So I call it like a family unit, like a family group, you know, because we all have amazing minds. So, um, You like telling grown people what to do? You should. <laughs> <You're just> nah. <laughs> Yo, if I even tried, no. I didn't say your parents now, but like other grown people, like, it's just kind of fun telling them what to do, isn't it? It's, it's not necessarily fun, but you know, I'm still trying to figure out the power that I have. It's kind of, it's kind of suspect, you know. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of different. I'm still trying to like balance between like you know, you're still a kid, and you know, you, but you're also in this huge space full of amazing mentors and people. So I mean, just. Eh, no, no, no. no. You too <laughs> nice. No, I'm not. Uh, no. Look, you you have to represent for kids everywhere, and just one day randomly make somebody grown go get you a Snickers. Yeah. Just cause you can't, <laughs> just randomly. Like, just go get me a Snickers. And, and say, That'd if you give funny. me some back talk. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah. that's, that's really uh, amazing that you had the foresight to start your own production company. Um, was production something that you always knew eventually you would gravitate to? Um, actually not. Like, really, I'm, since I'm still a kid, I'm still trying to learn myself throughout the whole situation. So I feel like, um, I've, I've always knew I wanted to create stuff. I always knew that I used to like draw comic books and like, you know, just the little small things before school or whatever. So, I mean, I kind of learned how to just be creative and just brainstorm in my own mind and realize how powerful that is. So after little, Universal was like, hey, so what about like a first book deal, you know, whatever. And I was like, well, what is that? You know, I learned, I, I've been learning all this stuff like, throughout this whole journey, and it's pretty cool, you know? It's pretty awesome, but I never knew that I wanted to be an executive producer. I didn't even know the title until, like, I really um, got in depth with it, and after Little, seeing Will Packer, Kenya Barris, like, people that really inspired me to grow as a person also, um, you know, it, the, the stuff actually showed, like, the passion really came out, so. Well, um, you have, uh, you're gonna be the answer to a lot of future trivia questions in the sense of, you know, who is the, who was the youngest uh, Hollywood producer that would be you, right? So, you, yes, you. Wow. You're the youngest producer in Hollywood ever. <laughs> That's great. Um, 
When you hear that attached to your name, um, what kind of comes to mind? What does that make you feel? <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> like, I'd be like, ah, really? You know, it's kind of crazy because, you know, I'm still me. I'm still just regular old Marcy Martin, wakes up, eats Cinnamon Toast Crunch, goes to the office. You know, this is just like a routine. That's the cereal of a boss. Yeah. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, for yeah, real. Yeah, I love, yo, that's the best cereal of all time. You know? <laughs> Not biased, whatever. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's surreal because I'm still myself and I'm still in a place of like gratitude and just being as humble as possible is my go-to. So I don't even see myself in that way, but I I grow every single day to see like how many people are inspired by the things that I'm doing. So I'm kind of getting comfortable with it. So it's kind of cool. Um, well, there's a lot of people who may not know your origin story. So uh, why don't you tell the audience how you got started and how you got on this path? Yeah, of course. Well, I actually started when I was five. I was doing like prints, like modeling stuff or like Neiman Marcus, you know, all the little stuff. And I was born in Dallas, Texas, if there's any Texans over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was born in Little Elm, Texas. That was like a small town. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of young black girls that looked like me on TV. So, I mean, I, I kind of just stumbled up on this, to be honest. So... Long story short, I was um, getting like headshots, not not like headshots, headshots, but like for the holidays, you know, just to put on your wall or whatever, you know, show your grandparents or whatever. So I was doing that and the photographer was like, turn to the left. So I turned to my left, turn to the right, turn to my life, well, life, right? <laughs> and um, then next thing you know, he was like, I will give you a discount if you use this card for an acting agency or is it a class? I'm checking with my parents. Was it a class? It was both. Okay, yeah, it was both. But he was like, I will give you a discount if you use this for your daughter because she knows her left from right. <laughs> I'm joking, but it was more, I feel like what he saw was more than that. I feel like it was more of how I was kind of in the space of like maturity at such a young age. So he was like, you just gotta use it. So I took one class and next thing you know, I had an LA agent and the rest was history, so. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's. Did I say that right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that's an incredible rise. So, as this is happening, as your life is, is changing, um, you know, how or what is like going through your mind as you get on this ride of being on Blackish and start this track? Like, how are you able to kind of reconcile all the things that are happening in your life um, at such rapid speed? Oh, I don't know. It's like so nerve wracking at the same time, but very exciting because I look at where I was and to where I am now and where I'm still growing, like knowing all these people that I used to look up to, like when Beyonce knows you, dog. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Everything breaks loose. I'm like, oh my God. You know, like I could be done. No, I'm joking. But just knowing uh, the people who I love and like are my mentors are now like seeing the things that I'm doing and are actually, um, you know, looking up to me, which it's kind of weird. It's kind of, but it's kind of exciting too. So I just try to be as confident as possible and just try to keep on moving forward because this is a passion of mine. So, I, I love it, it's absolutely amazing. And of course, having a great support system with me, with my team, and then with the cast of Blackish and anything that I do, it's just, they're very supportive, which is very helpful. So I wasn't gonna let that humble brag just float out there. So how does Beyonce know you? <laughs> <sighs> to be honest, I don't even know how. <laughs> but or how did you become aware that she knew who you were? Yes, well, actually, I was at the, <laughs> I was at the White House. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not, now you're just showing off. <laughs> so Beyonce knows yeah. me because I was at the White House. Continue. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> and what, you and Michelle were like having a sleepover? Is that what happened? Uh, <laughs> was that the next part of the story? <laughs> no, I wish though. Ooh, that would be crazy. I'm invited, so just yeah, so you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, of course. Right. Of course like, no. But yes, you were saying. Yes, um, it was, I think it was 2016, 15, around there. And it was when uh, Brock and Michelle were still in the office and they were in a tent. It, it was Beyonce, Jay-Z, Blue Ivy. There was, there was just them in a tent and then a bunch of people like secured around them. And I didn't know Beyonce was in there, but Anthony, 
<laughs> Anthony Anderson, my TV father on the show, he was like, yo, Beyonce's in it. And we were, and like everyone knew at the time, like I was a humongous Beyonce fan. So of course everyone was like, you know, bodyguards and stuff. They were like, you know, blocking the tent and stuff. But with Anthony, he just went from the back because it's a dang tent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dang tent, and you just you can just flip it up, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally you can just walk through. Right. But you know, I was oblivious to it because I was talking to my cousin there because um, somehow she was there, so I was talking to her, and everyone was separated. Of course, you know how big the White House is, so literally the whole cast of Blackish knew that Beyonce was there except me because I was talking to like my family. So everyone was trying to like run and get me because they're like, Marcy, we found Beyonce. <laughs> you know, literally they were like just trying to find me of course I didn't have my phone on me but Miles was trying to find me my twin brother on the show like literally my parents like I think it was with my dad and my mom was like oh my god oh my god this is the moment because you know I, I was gonna go crazy so somehow I came well long story short I came into the tent and <laughs> I just see a glimpse of her from the back and she looks at me I look at her and I just go Crazy, like I'm, I'm you just blacked, blacked out. Literally, I black out. I go dizzy. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> like literally, she just turns. She's like, you know. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like my <laughs> two year old me is quaking right now. Like, oh my gosh. Like I was freaking out, but I had to keep my cool. Like you know, I was like, okay, relax. Giving yourself a pet. Yeah, right yeah, now. It was, yeah. It's the queen, you know? I'm like, whew, okay. So everyone stands back. I go in there with Anthony, and Anthony introduces me, and Beyonce is just like, hello, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, hi, it's so nice to meet you. I started crying, you know? I was gonna keep my cool, but I was like, you're looking at me right now. You're like, hello, and you're, hold you're holding my hand. I'm like, mm. oh my God, it was crazy. And then she hugged me, and then I was just like, oh, What's up, Jay Z? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? How you doing? You know. So it was that was the first time, and then ever since then, it was like they they know me. It was lots of fun. Um, I went to this thing that she had for uh, like a party, and it was lots of fun. It was really cool. It was for Adidas, I think, and it was lots of fun. It was a great experience, and ever since then, it's just like this is crazy, you know. Just seeing the people that around me that are like like, you know, mentors to me, it's, it's nuts. It's, it's a crazy feeling, so. <laughs> uh, you never know who's watching, right? Um, yes, oh, when Michelle Obama asks you how's Sydney, like how's your baby sister, it's the craziest feeling. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that out loud, because it's like, <laughs> I saw her at um, this book thing that she was doing for her book, and literally she was like, how's your baby sister? I'm like, you know me? <laughs> you know Sydney? <laughs> Don't be like that. Yo, I can't wait till she's like old enough to know all the people that know her. <laughs> oh, look, she's right in front. She's like, right she's there. just oblivious nice to all the me. things going on. Oh. Uh, she said, <laughs> Yeah, she don't care. <laughs> but she'll know eventually. Uh, so, um, you know, with all, uh, with all your success, uh, what do you feel like is really good advice that you were given either by your parents or even by um, some of the actors on uh, Blackish who've been at this for a long time? Oh, I feel like it's just so many things that they taught me. Uh, the way I see advice, it's like they don't really have to tell me anything, but the more how they present themselves as uh, people and as like a... Just like, you know, just them being themselves is how I get advice from them. You know, like, oh, okay, I see them doing that. So, like, I won't do that. You know, like, you always see that type of stuff. So, I see, like, between Tracy Ellis Ross, Anthony Anderson, and, of course, my parents, my team, just them, how they present themselves and how they are, they're dedicated to their work ethic is pretty cool to see. So that's what that's where I get my advice from and how I just stay true to myself. And my dad always told, uh, tells me the hardest thing that will hit you is life. Mm. So I have to just, you know, you got to push through it. You got to work hard and just be dedicated. This is something that I want to do. So I'm always in that headspace. Now, the, the process of you uh, making Little, I find to be um, really a compelling and fascinating story. And uh, you know, for those who don't know, 
um, maybe about what the plot line is. It is after um, one of my favorite movies. I believe it was your mom's favorite movie. That's how you figured yeah, it out. It was, it was big. Film, yeah. And I felt immediately very old when you described it as a classic. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, damn, we have to put where big is a classic now? Okay. Um, but talk about what that process was like from taking a concept um, like Little and then seeing it all the way through to now it's on the big screen and it's you and it's Regina Hall and Issa Rae starring in it. Wow, it was surreal because, you know, you always think of ideas and stuff that would go through your head, but you never know what you could do with it, you know? In the beginning, we started, um, you know, we told Kenya Barris, which is the creator of Blackish, we, that's all we told. Like, we were just like, we just got this concept, we don't know what to do with it, but we just want to see if it was good or not. And that's really how it started. So we just talked to a close friend of ours had zero clue like where it would go, where would it be, but you know, we just had an idea for something, you know, that we think would be very empowering for black women in general. So I feel like that was that was the start and that was the process of it. And then Kenya right after called Will Packer and was like, Dog, you know Diane from Blackish? You know, like, you know, Marce Martin, like this she got she got this idea. We wanna just talk to you about it just to see what you think. And then literally Will was like, okay, dope, sweet. A few months go by, you know, like just like pretty chill, you know, because we're always busy on Blackish. So Will Packer calls us back and he's like, well, what happened to that idea, you know? <laughs> like, what happened? So after we went to his office and then we started talking to him about it, and then, yeah, the rest was history. And really, it was just like, I didn't realize how big it was going to be, you know? And just talking to someone as close as Kenya, really, we didn't even realize how big it was going to be and how powerful and how inspiring it could be to black women or just people in general. So it was, it was pretty cool. Oh, it was always intentional for you to have all black cast. Yes, you guys? I see Sydney clapping too. Sydney's like, hey. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you spoke with intention that it was always um, kind of in your mindset to have an all-black cast. Yeah. Why was it important for you to have one uh, for Little? Well, I mean, I didn't see a lot of that when I was growing up. And, of course, you want to create something that could relate to everyone. It doesn't matter who's the lead of it, but as long as it resonates with everyone and how they can feel something after they leave the theater, that's what I wanted. And I feel like... For us as black women, you really don't get to see that often, us in like a positive space, you know, us in like these CEO type roles and you don't die in the first act, like you don't die in first <laughs> act one or you're the sassy girl that like takes off weaves and pours <laughs> water on the next person. You know, you always see that um, just negative figure of yourself, which is kind of, um, you know, it could be entertaining. You know, I watch, you know, Love and Hip Hop. I, you know, I watch all that stuff, but I feel like, that's not shade. I heard someone say, ooh, yeah. that's not shade at all. <laughs> that's not shade. But I feel like just we need to see more of us in a positive, um, in a positive state. And I feel like um, that's something that needs to be um, well written and well done. And I'm so blessed to have a team that actually helped us present it in a cool way to where it's for everyone and for um, all audiences to see. And yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So I mean, a, a lot of times we see with, with child actors that they get pigeonholed into one particular role. Like nobody can see you other than being Diane. But of course, with Little, that allows you to sort of break out of that mold. Have you? I mean, how difficult is it though to kind of grow up with all of us watching you? You know what I'm saying? Is that we're watching you on TV every week, then we're seeing you in the movies. It's like you're just growing right along and watching your career, but is that difficult because you want to be young and you want to be a kid and you want to do certain things? Is that difficult to kind of grow up under these these circumstances? Like, we know you're going to hit an awkward phase and, I don't know, you're back in something crazy. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do, right? Who knows? Those times are expected to come. Like, But have you thought about, like, what that is like for you or what that will be like for you? Oh, yeah, of course. It's uh, It can be stressful at times. It's very nerve-wracking all the time just to see – like, you know, you are in front of a camera doing what you love, but behind the camera, you you don't know who's watching, you know, like in front of the TV or something, like millions of people are watching you. It's kind of, um, it's kind of nerve wracking, of course, and um, I always try to present myself in the best way. So, I mean, it could be, it could be difficult sometimes. So, I try to just be as confident as possible, just, you know, keep the, uh, keep moving forward, I guess. I... 
I am in a difficult space. It's like I am in like that teenage space to where like I don't know if I'm in this side or not, or am I like in the, you know, I'm in a difficult space. You know, it's like you're a teenager, but you're not like a grown adult. So people see you as like still somewhat a baby, but not really, you know, you know, all the aunties and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean, I try to, you know, have a good balance of that. And I feel like I'm doing good so far. I think it just makes sense to where I am showing off my awkwardness because a lot of people really don't see just the just the side of like I'm going through something or like I sound like I'm crying. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I'm not, you know, but I feel like it, I feel like it is important to actually show, you know, like your beautiful flaws you know because everyone has their own insecurities everyone has their own flaws but I feel like if you show them it will inspire more girls to be like oh okay so she's not perfect like how everyone sees it but I feel like if you are just yourself everything will go out smoothly and it's like they don't see you as like this robot you know because a lot of people see each other like as robots I saw Beyonce as a robot <laughs> in the beginning I feel like everyone did because I was like how is she like you know how is she not sweating? You know, like, how is she not sweating while she's dancing? Like, how does she go so quick when she dance? Like, you know, you always, you always see that type of stuff, but in the, you don't know what's going, like, what's going through their heads and in, in their minds while they're doing it. So I feel like it's very important to, you know, just show your true colors, you know? So, uh, if, somebody, if that makes sense. I don't know. That makes a lot of sense. If somebody told me Beyonce had the ability to vanish, I'd be like, yes, she probably does. Yeah, for real. I would imagine that you get people running up to you constantly, particularly younger people asking like, hey, I want or, or telling you they want to break into entertainment. Um, but what are maybe two or three things, or even if you have more, that somebody who wants to break into entertainment, what should they be working on? Um, I feel like they should be working on why they're there in the first place. You know, try to figure out what's their purpose. You know, trying to figure out why are they here? What do they want to see? Like, you know, you always got to have, you know, a goal to reach. And I feel like you got to just, you know, write down your goals, try to push and like push what you love and push your passion. And I feel like just, you know, I feel like writing is something great to do. And I think if you write down something that like you love or something that you want to see, I think it will move move the thing forward. I feel like if you say what's on your mind out loud, it moves the process smoothly, like way, way more smoothly. And I've learned that uh, recently, so. <laughs> now, how are uh, rooms for you now when you walk in, uh, in terms of things, projects you wanna pitch as a, as a producer? Um, is there, do you feel as if because of your age, that people respect your work enough, given like how young you are. Like, do you get any ageism? I guess. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Wait, what'd you say? Ageism. Ageism. It's That's a real word. Great. Wow. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. It's all yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks. But um, yes, I do. In the beginning, um, when I was kind of like pitching little, trying to talk to people. It wasn't, it was like, who is this girl? Like, who is this like young black girl just trying to do their thing, you know? So I feel like the narrative has changed since little came out and knowing the title that I have, it's kind of turned some tables. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, the things have changed now, but now I'm in a space where I am trying to create stuff for my friends also, like my, the people that are still in this industry, still trying to get up there, or the people that are not even famous or any of that, just they have a dream or they want to do something. You know, it's always, uh, it's always great to see people rise with you. So I try to open the doors for them also and get them to have a seat at the table too. So when they see that, it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty sick. So, so um, at this point, are you, do you feel like in terms of what, projects people want to work with you on that you're getting enough variety or are people typecasting you by what they're sending you that they want you to be involved with? Um, well, at the moment, I'm just, it's kind of like a mix of like, I'm doing my own stuff, but also like listening to other people's ideas. But I feel like it's no, not, not really. It's okay. more of like a variety of stuff, I think. So, so for you, um, from here, how would you like to 
leverage the success of a little uh, going for it with, with projects that you are either contemplating or you want to work on in the future? <sighs> like, how am I coping with it? Or is it no, like no, no, like, how are you leveraging that? Because oh, that's you've, had a, yeah. Yeah, you've had a, yeah, you've had a success, proven success. So how are you using that to leverage um, what you achieve going forward? How am I using that? I'm using that as proof that I, if I can do it, you can do it type stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm using that as, like, here, this is something that I did. That means it's not impossible for you not to do it, you know, it's for, you, for you to do it, you know. So that's, that's kind of what I'm using it for. But I feel like I, anything that I do, it's more in um, just the create, creative mind that I have. So I'm not even, like, thinking about that, to be honest. So. Is there anybody in particular, or maybe it's a group of people, that's on your wish list of people you'd love to produce and or work with? Yes. Um, Ty the Creator is my favorite rapper, and I want him to score one of my movies. Put it out That'd there. That would be pretty sick. <laughs> Love that. Um, Rihanna to be my sister, my twin, my something. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> you know what? The See that movie Twins? There you go. Well, here's the thing. Um, I'm a bit short. So, like, so you know, was Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you've never seen twins, you probably have never seen twins. No, oh, mom, <laughs> you showed her big, look what it turned into. So, twins, I'll explain to you, Black Saints. Oh, I've seen, um, sister? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is, is, that, is, that, is that no, it's not the same. Okay, we're not, not gonna, uh, you know, judge me. Okay, but you said Rihanna is somebody you want to work with, yes, Rihanna, Ty the Creator. Um, Let's see. I mean, there's so many of them. There's so many people that I look up to that I'm like, yeah, I want to I wanna work with them. And I have so many ideas in, on the slate right now to where, like, any person I meet is like, oh, they'd be great for that character. Bring them to the office. You know, that's yeah. something that I'm into now. So, so how do you achieve work-life balance? How do I achieve it? I feel like... Do you have it? <laughs> <laughs> like, let's start there. Do you even have work-life balance? I mean... Kind of, sort of, but not really. Not really? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like the perfect answer for that because yeah. I'm still like growing as a person also. So, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm kind of getting there. So. All right. Yeah. Your, your self-care is cinnamon toast crunch, right? Yes. Okay. Of course. Yeah. And okay. sleep. And sleep. Sleep helps. You know, <laughs> sleep always helps, you know. Clap for sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, know that you have so much more. You're barely getting started. That's what's so scary about this. You are barely getting started, Marseille. And now I, for one, can't wait to see all the amazing things that you do next. And from years and years and years to come, because you got a long way to go in this business. So please give a warm round of applause for Marseille. Yes.